Before I begin, let me just apologize that I haven't done one of these in a long time. Honestly, it's not that I didn't want to do an anime review. I've just been really lazy. These just take so much time and effort and I just, I never really got the motivation to do more of them. I think I've done maybe six or seven and I just, so many series that I want to do a review on and just did not have the motivation to do it. But now I'm back and I'm gonna try and do more of these anime reviews as often as possible. I have quite a few series in mind that I would love to review and I would love to hear you guys' thoughts on this. What series do you want to hear my thoughts on? What series do you want me to review next? If I've seen it and I have serious thoughts on it, I would be more than happy to. So, without further ado, let's get to the review. Hey everybody, this is Azrael Sword one and it's time for another anime review. Today we're going to be taking a look at Please Teacher. Please Teacher is a 13 episode anime from 2002 produced by Bandai Visual. The series comprises of 12 episodes in one OVA that serves as a series finale. The Plot This comedy sci-fi romance follows a young man named Kei Kusanagi, a high school student in rural Japan who suffers from a debilitating illness that he calls standstills. If he is ever in extreme physical or emotional stress, his body shuts down and he's left in a comatose state. At the age of 15, he suffered a particularly bad standstill, which left him comatose for three years. You see, whenever I get really depressed, my body and my spirit seem to go into a near-death state of unconsciousness. Apparently, it's the first case ever in the world, and they don't know what causes it or how to deal with it. It's gotten a lot better, but... I had one horrible standstill while I was in junior high. I, uh, was unconscious for nearly three years. I fell three years behind due to a bad illness. I may be in 10th grade, but I'm 18 years old! One day he meets the beautiful Mizuho Kazumi, a human-alien hybrid sent to scout out our planet. Through some really extenuating circumstances, he discovers her secret, she moves into the apartment next to his, she becomes his homeroom teacher, gets caught locked in a storage room with him at night, and they are forced to get married in order to keep her secret. If you can get past the series of logical somersaults needed to rationalize that series of events as plausible, the series is actually very good. <laughs> yeah, 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 hey, yeah. Uh, what's wrong, yeah, dear? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <sighs> what are you doing in my tub with a naked woman? <sighs> hey, 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 now cut that out, Kay. You're, you're gonna make me jealous. <laughs> what did you say, dear? The story follows three main plot points. The most overarching one is Kay and Misuho's relationship. At first, it's a marriage of convenience, with no real emotional attachment. But as the series progresses, both characters open up and change. And for a series that's only 13 episodes long, it's done very naturally. The second plot is Kay's standstills. This point becomes very important in the more serious second half, where we find out the source of his standstills. The final plot is Kay's friends. They each have their own stories and their own lives. The series does a very good job of not shoehorning their stories in, 
but rather making it clear that it is their lives. We are seeing them through Kay's perspective. Most of it happens off screen, and we're hinted to their affairs and relationships in short bursts throughout the series, which culminate in one climax for each character. Kay's relationship with Mizuho acts as a kind of catalyst for certain events in Kay's friends' lives, but the main focus never deviates too far from the main couple. The Characters As I mentioned before, Kay is an 18-year-old trapped in a 15-year-old's body. He is timid, physically weak, and kind of nerdy, but he is also strong-willed, opinionated, and loyal to his friends. Throughout the series, he has to get used to married life, while at the same time keeping it a secret and trying to live a normal life with his friends. Couple that with keeping his illness a secret, and he has quite an interesting character. Surprisingly though, Police Teacher does a good job of not making him perfect or too stupid. He does struggle with his new life and his old one. He's not above admitting when he's in over his head, and sometimes he does act out which is to be expected, but he also seems to handle serious things with a good deal of maturity. Sorry, Koishi, I have someone that I'm in love with, and I don't want to be separated from her. I argue with her for the stupidest reasons, and I feel inferior to her almost all the time, but still I want to be together with her. Every day, I can't help it. This nice balance is refreshing, especially in an etching. There are times when you see too much of someone, and stop understanding. I think I just realized that for the first time. That it's not just... words. Mizuho Kazumi Mizuho is a beautiful, smart, 22-year-old alien-human hybrid. She comes to Earth to scout out the planet for a surprisingly benevolent alien organization. However, her true reason for coming is a bit more personal. Her father was a human, and he died when she was very young, so she wanted to learn more about her father by learning about his homeworld. Mizuho is kind, fiercely loyal, and more than willing to stand up for herself. However, she's also scatterbrained, opinionated, and stubborn. She has a tendency to jump to conclusions and is prone to jealous fits, which sometimes strains the relationship between her and Kay. No! Hmm? Disgusting! How could you? You have grasped my heart away! You cad! You rogue! Whoa, what was that? Who was that uh, girl, Kay? I, I don't know. Why was she crying? Uh, how should I know? You were pretending to play with your friends while the whole time you were really out picking up young girls. No, I wasn't. But she was crying. She said you grasped her heart away. Listen to me. I was playing cards with the guys, then I went out to get some stuff with Koishi. You were alone with that girl? Yeah, I was. Why? Did she come on to you? I didn't do anything. She did come on to you, didn't she? Just wait a second! Stop! I don't care anymore. Miss Kazumi! Miss Kazumi, wait! That said, both main characters feel like real people rather than cardboard cutouts. They have their problems, sometimes clashing and having to build up their relationship and iron out the rough patches. But they are both committed to making their relationship work. I happen to think this is something to be admired. There are many side characters, but for the sake of brevity I'll skip them as their arcs are short and many contain spoilers for the rest of the series, and I'll let you find out those bits on your own. Art and Music Animation is done by Dawn, a little known company with their only other animations of note being Please Twins, the sequel series to Please Teacher, as well as a little known anime called Shiki. Yumeko. 
The animation is a bit hit and miss, especially during the action or comedy bits, where you can feel that the animation is a bit dated. Most of my problems with the animation circle around the final episode or OVA, where the animation suffers an extreme drop in quality, both in the actual movement animation and in the art design and drawing. It becomes downright horrendous in many moments of the episode. And not for comedy's sake, but at any point in the episode, for whatever reason, the faces will become heavily distorted, the movements will become erratic and terribly animated, and it really is something that breaks your immersion. You're no longer as focused on the episode if the animation is just god-awful. But most of the time, the animation and the character design is breathtakingly beautiful, easily holding up today, 12 years later. It's hard to imagine that this is still in the days when anime was drawn out by hand. The music for the most part is fairly subdued. Most of it is very light orchestrals for dramatic or romantic moments, emphatic music for the comedy bits, and the chirping of the cicadas for the more somber moments. The opening, Shooting Star by Kotoko, is very nice, setting the mood for the series nicely. However, the ending is pretty forgettable. One last thing that I want to talk about is the English dub. This series came out in 2002, and it's not a high budget series, so you'd expect it to get the chibi vampire or Kaden treatment. Shipping it overseas to get dubbed by some hack company from the Philippines to save a buck or two. Just what are you trying to do? Now do I really have to tell you? If you just give me a little of what I'm asking for, you might find a little extra in your paycheck. So how about it, baby? Stay away! Ugh. Skin crawls. And yet, quite a few talented voice actors were brought in to do the dubs. Here's just a few. Kei Kusanagi was voiced by Dave Wittenberg. You might know him as Kakashi Hatake from Naruto. Mizuho Kazumi was voiced by Bridget Hoffman, the voice of Bel Dandy from All My Goddess, and Lane from Serial Experiments Lane. She also voiced Iris Veal von Einsberg from Fate Zero, Namie Yagiri from Durarara, and Nia from Gurren Lagann. Koichi Herikawa was voiced by Michelle Ruff, the voice of Chi from Chobits, as well as Rukia Kuchki from Bleach. Kaede Misumi was voiced by Melissa Fan, the voice actress of Ed from Cowboy Bebop, as well as Seta Sojiro from Moroni Kenshin. And finally, Hyosuke Magumo was voiced by Kirk Thornton, the voice actor of Hajime Saito from Moroni Kenshin, Gabumon and Garuruman, and all subsequent evolutions from the Digimon franchise, as well as Jean from Samurai Champloo. But it should be noted that each and every one of these voice actors voiced these characters long before they got the roles I just mentioned, and thus were far less experienced in voice acting. And not only that, the script itself is extremely wooden and dated, and, and oftentimes lines are downright cringeworthy. And if I have to hear, this is a priority one, one more time, I swear to God I'm going to scream. This is now priority one. This is now priority one. This is a priority one. Priority one. This is a priority one. This is priority one. My priority one. This is a priority one. This is a priority one. This is a priority one. Final thoughts. Please teacher is of course not perfect. The premise of the story can be very difficult to swallow. The animation suffers ups and downs. And the voice acting, while well done, suffers from poor script writing that really hinders it. But if you can look past all those things, you'll find a series with a plethora of redeeming qualities. It's a series with a lot of heart, where the focus is the interactions and the bonds between the two main characters, how their relationship progresses, and how naturally it goes from a relationship of convenience to one of real respect, admiration, and affection. Please Teacher is a short, fun-filled anime with a lot of heartwarming moments and really engaging and relatable characters. While I understand that it's not everyone's cup of tea, if you have time, I highly suggest you stop and check it out. I promise it is well worth your time. And that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Leave me your thoughts in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think I should review next. If you like my video, then please leave a like. 
comment, subscribe if you feel so inclined, and I will see you guys later. Adios! What were you and Miss Kazumi doing together in, of all places, the bathtub in our house? Well, you know, it's kind of like... how do I say it? It's kind of funny in a way. What are you, a politician? I want an explanation, and I don't want you to leave out any details. So it is what I thought it was. I am so jealous of you. She's such a voluptuous woman. Now, now, dear. <sighs> Sorry, dear.